Hello again everybody, thanks again for clicking on this video, and I'm excited to share my progress the last month. I'm still following the same program, and there's been no spectacular gains, but that is the name of the game if you want to win in the long run, I think in this iron war. <laughs> so here you see me just warming up for my push-up workout, trying to jumpstart the central nervous system with some explosive movements. And I'm going into my first work set here, assisting with two fingers for the incline one arm push up. This is really good at simulating the incline bench press, you know? And I'm fairly sure, yeah, I was using two fingers here as opposed to three. Last week I got five reps on three fingers on both sides, but this time the two fingers really took its toll and I only got, boom, four reps, falling flat on my face. And for some reason now, my right side is weaker than my left. I think because I've been emphasizing the left for so long. So I actually only get two reps on this side. Pretty sure I fall here, and blah. Yeah, so there's a big leap in difficulty between doing three fingers and two fingers. Um, so I put three fingers up here to finish off and do four reps on both sides. You can really see me twisting on the way up, which is usually a dead giveaway that someone's getting tired in one-arm push-up work. I actually think lately that cheating a bit on form is kind of helpful. You know, it helps you bust through plateaus. If you're always trying to be perfect with every rep, you sort of, especially with bodyweight stuff, you kind of can't push through those plateaus. So I think a bit of, you know, improvised form is sometimes a good thing. And you can see there that I gradually make it easier and easier by using more of my hand just to get exactly the right amount of reps that I want in that set, which is this time five, because I it's reverse pyramid training and I try to add a rep on every set at least. If not, I can add two reps, it's usually better. And there I am using my whole hand for this side because I know that I'm gonna need all the help I can get to get five reps. <laughs> One more? No. And then my last set, just to get some volume and help warm me up for the way the dips after, some archer push-ups. Again, you have to like twist your head so your chest touches the floor. I'm really getting a big range of motion on this one. And here I am walking around to my dip station like an old man, because the amount of weight I'm carrying now is just so chunky that it's difficult to just get into position to start the exercise. Um, you can see there I'm using a block so that they don't fall out to the sides when I go down. I was able to add two and a half kilos to this every single week, actually. And even my reps will keep going up. And uh, But this was the worst workout I've done, actually. These are catching me on a really bad week because I was doing intermittent fasting there, trying to lose some weight this last week. And when I filmed all these, I was really weak, like about 33% weaker on every exercise. So this is not going to be pretty, I apologize, but I promise it's usually a lot better than this. Um, yeah, even my range of motion is not great on this set. See, uh, wait, that one was okay, yeah? That was about parallel. And this is four. Yeah, still okay. I'm sort of loose about that these days, so long as the muscle is being stressed and I'm getting stronger. I don't really care too much about the exact range of motion I use, so long as it's consistent from week to week, you know? And yeah, I changed the technique on that as well and brought the arms in a bit closer to do more of a tricep dip because I just felt like it was safer. My neck used to strain on it, but uh, I seem to have found a good technique now for dips. And we're on to the one-legged squats, or pistols as they're usually called. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I'm alternating the legs here because it just it's nicer to have three sets to work with rather than six. You know, there's less rest periods and focuses me more on just getting the most out of each set I find. Plus alternating the legs just feels like it exercises me more evenly. You know, you always kind of exhaust one leg a bit when you're holding it out in front of you like that. Now I'm aiming for six reps here and I'll leave it as a surprise whether or not I get it. Uh, I think that's six, is it? The runners also make this a little bit easier by raising the heels slightly. Oh no, one more. Uh, Oh, that's it. Good job, Owen. And lastly, can you make it six on both sides? Yes. I've come so far in this exercise in the last month from only being able to do one or two to six a side. So yeah, whatever I did for pistols, you should just copy me because I think it's good. <laughs> uh, and here I fail. 
it's funny, last month that would have like snapped my ligament in two, especially since I had so much knee problems last year, but I seem to have been one of those lucky guys who's healed his legs and his knees by doing pistol squats properly. So I finish off the six reps with a counterweight here. And even if that gets too difficult, I'll go on and do some one-legged box squats. Squats are so mentally draining and exhausting. Like, I love them and hate them at the same time, you know, because they just take so much out of you. <laughs> he thinks so too, I think. Woo, I'm even getting just tired looking at myself there. <laughs> and the last thing I do in that workout is some muscle-up work. Now, this is last month, so that's the reason. I mean, it just looks like a real pull-up, doesn't it? It's maybe an inch or two higher. Really using the kip as much as I can. But this is this month now, and it's improved quite a bit. You can see my elbows come around. Oh. If I can just snap it around a bit more, I should have a muscle up, actually. I'm actually, the first rep goes all the way to my sternum. And I'm really focusing on just doing quality over quantity now. So I'm just doing three reps. Here's a better picture of the difference between the two months. You can see my the bars at my sternum and the other one is just like a normal pull up. <laughs> so I think maybe in within two months, two or three months, I should be doing muscle ups. And my weighted chin up work. Now, I actually work my way up to 25 kilos with this for four reps, which is awesome. And I decided since the four rep was hard, I'd follow Kino Body's suggestion of doing six to eight reps and working your way up again. So this is only 12 and a half kilos. Um, and I should have gotten eight reps, but embarrassing for me because of my drop in strength with the fasting, that was six and can I get seven? Not even seven. Look, my face looks so disappointed. Oh, don't worry Owen, we'll make up for it next time. <laughs> All to say, uh, it's amazing how much uh, reduce, uh, reducing your food intake can make you so weak. And here's my pikes. Now these have really come along in the last month. I was doing with, with my feet, you know, lower than my hands, but now they're almost in a jackknife position. And again, I should have gotten about nine or 10 reps here, but I only got six. So that's a reduction in 25% strain because I usually get eight last time. And the full range of motion makes it so much more difficult, but this also seems to be helping me with strength gains. And when I go to the wall after to do headstand push-ups, it'll only be half that range of motion. So in theory, it should be so easy to make the transition. And again, ah, six reps, what the hell? What's wrong with me? <laughs> and then just to give my legs a break from pistols, I also alternate it with some jumps on these workout days. Again, that's part of the bodyweight mastery program from uh, Gregor Gallagher. And here's the last workout, which is my front levels. I managed to get the, um, the full ice cream makers last month, uh, within the last month, so now I'm doing them without bending my arms, which makes it, you know, about 100 times harder. <laughs> you feel like you could do 100 reps of this, but you really have to focus on quality over quantity. Keep your whole body straight and stay honest. I think, do I stop it there, do I? Yeah, you terminate the set when you feel like you've exhausted perfect technique or as close as you can get. Again, cheating is kind of important with that one. You know, some body wisdom to help you uh, bust through a plateau. And I still love my grip work from Convict Conditioning, so because of my wrist especially, I'm trying to, you know, build it up again. So here I am working towards one arm towel hangs, which are incredibly difficult. If you don't do them, you really should start because they're the absolute best burn I've ever gotten in my forearms. And I finish it off again with the Convict Conditioning Trifecta as per Paul Wade and Gregor Gallagher's suggestion. I love doing this, I usually do the head bridges, you know, or the full bridges, but I found that it's a lot better to bring your feet closer together, it just is much better for the lumbar spine. And the blocks between my legs just really help to protect my knees, I find. I used to get a pinching sensation, but that went away when I used blocks. So uh, I'm working my up, way up slowly with the bridges again. And after that then I bend the spine in the opposite way with an L sit. Now I decided to do it with kinked arms to start off with because according to compact conditioning it doesn't matter which way you do it, you know. And I've seen Greg as well from Kino Body, he always flexes his elbows a bit when he does this, you know. And there I am, halfway to a V-sit, you know, uh, it's, it's, you know, to the normal person it would look like a V-sit, but to a gymnast it would be very far from a V-sit. <laughs> but it gets a good burn on my abs and I'm getting stronger each week, so you can see the look on my face, like 
I'm about to give birth or something. <laughs> and here I am with locked elbows. It's so much more difficult. Like, I can't even do an L sit with this. Look, the legs are below parallel. So I decided to kink them just to illustrate the difference here. And with, yeah, there you go. See, <laughs> it actually looks more natural to kink your arms a bit. So I might just do that from now on, maybe. I don't know, I love finishing off with my twists because it always eats out those cracks in the spine. <laughs> and this has been improving as well, actually. My weak side is about as flexible as my strong side now. You know, I can grab my hand on both sides and I should really get rid of that zit there on my shoulder. Anyway, I finish off with the splits because I just want to be like Jean-Claude Van Damme. And to anybody who's sensitive to animal mating, look away now. These are my neighbor's dogs and I just thought it'd be funny to put it at the end of the video. <laughs> Sorry, I love this, the way this dog looks here. He just looks so happy and the other one just, just doesn't seem to even notice that he's being humped. <laughs> Sorry, I hope I didn't offend anyone there. <laughs> Anyway, that's the um, the work I've vlogged for this month. Slow and steady progress, nothing amazing, but that's what I love, you know? I didn't do anything drastic. Everything has just gotten a little bit better than next last month, and next month it should just get a little bit better again. So, um, any questions, just pop them down below. I'm always happy to help. It seems like everybody watched my um, one year convict conditioning transformation video and then didn't bother watching anything else. So there's not as many questions on the later videos, but um, if you have anything you want to ask, just pop it below, and I'm happy to always reply to everybody. Um, until next month, uh, happy training everybody, and I will talk to you again very soon.